so far from what I've seen, most of the people that still seem to support Trump after all of this either try to deny that it's right-wingers who stormed the Capitol building, or they double down and claim that, uh, oh, this is only the beginning, that we need to take back our republic at all costs. It seems that people like Rush Limbaugh are of that latter category when he says things like this. There's a lot of people calling for the end of violence. There's a lot of conservatives, social media, who say that violence or aggression at all is unacceptable, regardless of the circumstances. I'm glad that Sam Adams, Thomas Paine, the actual Tea Party guys, the men at Lexington and Concord didn't feel that way. Well, that's nice. How are the history books going to view January 6, 2021? Then there's Mike Lindell, who said this. Hello, everyone. We're heading, to, heading off for this week, this historical week. Um, I'm actually going to be meeting with General Flynn, Sidney Powell, everybody on my team. What a stuff going on that I can't say. All I want to do is give everybody confidence that Donald Trump's going to be your president for the next four years. Just you wait, just wait, just you wait and see, just, just you've been... All this, they're, they're very much afraid all the evidence that I know is there is going to come out this week. No, no, we have the proof, just wait, no, just wait. And, and everybody praying, everybody praying for protection for everybody that's standing up to these guys for our country. This is the only time we have in history to beat these guys. Trump is our only chance. Communism, communism, com communism. To, to suppress the evil and, um, and beat the evil. Um, this is, uh, um, it's, it's a blessing that we're time we're in, where on election night that, the, uh, that Donald Trump got so many votes that actually uh, broke the algorithms of the machines. Votes broke the algorithms. Where is your tinfoil hat? This is all going to be revealed. If we, if that hadn't happened, it'll all be revealed. Shh, shh, shh. My, my pillow, my McDonald's, my computer, my documents. If all of you hadn't voted in our country, if we hadn't all voted and his, it, with because of this great president, um, it, those algorithms would not have broke, and we wouldn't be sitting here talking right now. We would all went to bed. They would have had, a, would have been over in the morning, and. Uh, but because uh, he got six million more votes than what they expected, which is close to 80 million, and this will all come out. Yep, it's, it's just around the corner. There'll be truth around the corner. Biden only got 68 million, if that. I mean, they, uh, but they, uh... Baseless, faceless, graceless. You're gonna see all these things. I'm um, heading out now from Minnesota. You know, though, there probably is something coming. What we saw on the 6th might be only the beginning of how terrible people on the right can act. You know, maybe we will see close to there being a civil war. I don't know, but uh, yeah, we, we might see things get a lot worse in that regard. Not necessarily anything that's actually going to change the legality of anything, you know, it doesn't mean that we're going to get Trump for four more years, but it's going to mean that people are going to act like terrorists some more. And, you know, we're supposed to give in to the terrorists because reasons, right? And um, I'm going to keep you all updated. We're actually going to do a, a uh, filming. I'm going to get something filmed when we're presenting all the evidence so that you all can see this. I want, I want America to see what I've seen, all the evidence, because this, is, this isn't something where we can ever get complacent on. This is a fight for everything we've grown up with, everything we live for, everything this country stands for. The whole world is watching, and 100% Donald Trump is going to be your president in the next four years. <laughs> yep, yep, that, that's right. That's, that's right. Just pray to Jesus. That's right. We cannot, uh, I don't want anyone out there to lose the faith. Everybody keep praying. So as you can see, it's just more cryptic bullshit. Oh, we know something you don't. So we're going to withhold this information from you, but just listen and believe. The big reckoning is coming, and we're on the winning team. And when you look at some of the comment sections on some of these videos, it's just like, uh, yeah, people seem to be ready to go to war. 
Oh, it's a revolution. We want the status quo, damn it. But you know, just you wait, it's coming. We won't say what it is because we're not completely sure what it is, but be assured, it's coming. Attention, attention, it's coming. Yeah, unfortunately, there are people who are 100% convinced that Trump is the only path for the United States to not be taken over by communism. Many of them, as you can see here and as you can see in many other places, they're convinced that Trump is doing God's work. It broke the algorithm. The, the machines had to shut down. It had to pause, folks. That was you and me. It was our participation. And voting for President Donald Trump, that anointing that's in us, the blessings of God that's on us, one small little glitch was enough to, to break Satan's scheme. And you and I voting from around the nation, you and I getting out and voting by faith and trusting that God planted Donald Trump in office, messed up the algorithm. God Almighty. That God must prevail and communism must lay in ruins. Now, I'm not a fan of communism, but I, I don't have this paranoia going through my head all the time about it. Many of these people essentially think that being a patriot means that you believe in God and you believe in Donald Trump. You know, and, and all of these reasons, the, the, the religious reasons, the oh no, communism is coming kind of reasons, this is why so many people are so serious about this. Some of them truly think that if we have Biden as president, that this won't be the United States anymore. Most of the paranoid thinking revolves around the CCP. Like, like China is just ready to take over the country at any minute. So, like, when it comes to the subject of censoring people, you know, there, there's a point when some people with these kinds of mindsets become just kind of sick in the head. And you can try to reach them, but all they'll do is show you links to conspiracy theory websites and say, see, this is what's going on. And it's just like, that's a conspiracy website. That's, that's, a, that's a YouTuber or a bit shooter or whatever. They, all they do is spew conspiracy theories. Yeah, I suppose, you know, a broken clock is, is right, uh, you know, twice a day or once a day, depending on if it's, you know, 24-hour clock or something, right? You know, but it's, it's just on that type of media. And I'm supposed to believe it? Just you wait. And just so some of you don't get all pissy towards me, yes, there are definitely people on the left who are just as off the rails as the people that I'm describing in this video. This isn't letting anyone off the hook. I'm just describing something that, that interests me at this time, and this is what I'm thinking about. So, when it comes to the people who are so far down this rabbit hole that they see communism in everything and everyone, and in every attempt to do something good for the world, communism, and they're getting kind of sick in the head about it, do we try to help them get out of this mindset that they're in, this... I don't know what you'd call it, but just paranoid delusional bullshit? Do we, do we try to get them out of it? Do we try to stop them from getting even more sick in the head? You know, while at the same time trying to spread awareness of what this type of mindset leads to, what it means, what it does to people, what it does to people's cognitive skills and abilities, you know, what it can do to relationships and families, you know, the fact that it spreads fear and anxiety, or do we shove these people and these mindsets underground via bans and censorship, where they'll become sicker than ever in their echo chambers, and they'll get so sick that they'll be just really easy to just round up and prosecute and essentially throw them away? Because at this point, or at that point, everyone that doesn't believe in whoever this person is who believes in these conspiracy theories, anyone who says they don't believe in these conspiracy theories is part of the system that they think is suppressing them in the first place. The system that's conspiring against them. These people are unreachable, and when it gets to, to extremes, can be dangerous. And so this, this secondary, the, the latter option is that once they're ripe enough 
from trash thinking, from paying so close attention to only these alternative sources that give them alternative facts, you know, where they get all their information and worldviews from these underground, conspiracy-laden sources, that we can round up all these people and do something with them. I'm unfortunately seeing a number of people on the left prefer to take the latter option. Let all these mindsets go underground where they fester and become easier to identify, and then round them all up and dispose of them. You know, maybe in some cases try to rehabilitate, but, uh, you know, what, uh, <laughs> re-education camps, is that it? I don't know. You know, and in going that sort of route, the censorship and banning sort of thing, Eventually, the people who have these kinds of viewpoints would be forced to talk about these subjects via shady software, you know, or use VPNs. And then if people use those VPNs often, then uh, probably some of those VPNs would be sued. And then ISPs all over the world would start blocking certain domain names and IP addresses. And then as people change those IP addresses constantly to try to get around that, you know, it ends up being a big cat and mouse game. You know, myself, I take the first option. I try to stop them from getting that sick in the first place, or at least this is what I hope for anyway, to stop them from getting as sick in the first place. And then also trying to spread awareness about the sickness, you know, as much as I can handle. I mean... Sometimes listening to these bullshit theories can be quite draining. Especially when you know the people pushing them believe so strongly in them. I mean, some people essentially base their identities off of these things. One of the problems is that there are so many people pushing forth these paranoid viewpoints. And the only proof of these viewpoints comes from websites that all they focus on are conspiracy theories. These websites never try to look at this information in any sort of objective manner. They immediately try to pull at your angry heartstrings as much as they can. You know, there's tons of links to other angry heartstrings kinds of stories and conspiracy theories. So when people post those sorts of links to me saying, oh, you need to read this, it's kind of like... When someone pushing forth a really extreme viewpoint and they say that it's feminism and the website they point me to has feminism in the name just by itself, you know, oh, uh, you know, modern feminism or whatever, right? And they're saying, oh, it's absolute proof that men have a serious problem and it needs to be worked on. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to really have much of a desire to look at it. Yeah, I'm not interested in getting my outlook or information from sites like that. You know, same if you want to point to some article that says that women need to be submissive. And it's obviously on some site that goes on about, you know, it's, it's a stereotypical MRA site, you know, with no other sources. It's just the opinions of these people. And it's just like... Yeah, I'm supposed to take that seriously? Oh, but it's on a website. Look, everyone, it's a website. Yeah, just about anyone can make a fucking website. Extraordinary claims need extraordinary evidence. I don't care what kind of credentials a reporter or commentator has. If they're making absolutist claims about things that completely clash with everything that I think that I know, and the only thing they can offer is their personal view of the situation then I'll take it for what it is, someone's personal view of the situation. But, you know, if you tell me that tomatoes are poisonous, but the only sources you can give me for that viewpoint are a bunch of bullshit supplement and homeopathy websites, or they contain a bunch of links to those things, yeah, I I'm probably not going to take it seriously. In fact, in my mind, I almost completely eliminate the validity of any site that puts a bunch of bullshit supplements and homeopathy crap on their, uh, you know, on the sidebar or whatever. It's just like, yeah, sorry, you, you've lost credibility. So when that comes up, yeah, I, I'm not going to take it seriously. I might search some phrases I find on it, you know, search on Google, see what comes up there. 
And if I find some sources for this stuff that doesn't seem shady, yeah, I might, I might uh, consider it. But you know, if the first thing you show me is a conspiracy website, I'm, I'm far less likely to look further into it. And no, that doesn't mean, oh, I'm afraid of the truth. It's like the people who say, oh, you're not an atheist, you just hate God. Just like, no, I, I don't believe in, in the existence of a anthropomorphic God. You know, but no, I'm not afraid of the truth. I'm afraid of acquiring yet another piece of bullshit, paranoid kind of viewpoint bouncing around my head, churning in my head for an undefined period of time, taking up mental resources. We only have so many mental resources at any given one time, you know? I don't like obsessing about things that I know beforehand are most likely bullshit to begin with. Hey, look, it's another far-fetched conspiracy theory. Okay, if, you, if you're going to tell me it's true, give me some good sources. You know, and when I run across this and other people, I'm just like, oh, okay, you believe in that kind of thing. All right, whatever. I mean, it's not like it's any worse than a number of beliefs that come out of Abrahamic religious people. I mean, they, they, believe, in, they believe in the Bible. So many of the stories of the Bible, it's just like, you believe that shit? Well, all right, whatever. Now, if those beliefs in someone else creates fear, crippling fear, around finding solutions to major problems, you know, that we should ignore those problems or rely on God or unregulated capitalism to take care of the problem. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to take issue with that. And I can't just pretend that those kind of fear-inducing viewpoints don't have detrimental things about them. You know, those kinds of beliefs are detrimental. Having said that, there are a number of conspiracy theories that have proof behind them. Like Klaus Schwab and the World Economic Forum and the Great Reset. I mean, where the info you can find about it is easy, it comes right from the horse's mouth. You know, then there's the related Build Back Better and the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development. You know, and the world leaders who repeat that tagline, Build Back Better, right? You can look all these things up, it's easy to confirm, and it's not just on conspiracy websites, it's, it's all right there. I made a video about this stuff already, and I'll leave a link to that in the description bar, because I don't need to go into that for ages on this video too, so... But yeah, some people are at this point where they see communism everywhere and in everything. Just like how I talked about, oh, you could see a certain number everywhere. Oh, people who see, who see the patriarchy everywhere. They see racism everywhere. Well, these people see communism everywhere. Communism, look out! You know, some of these people don't want to see any social progress whatsoever. And in fact, some of these people argue for us to essentially regress back like a couple or a few decades, right? To these people, any social progress is communism. Any attempts for the government to help the people is communism. Any restrictions on businesses is communism. The word diversity is a code word for communism. These people, as far as I'm concerned, are kind of gone. I've known a number of people who have started going this route over the past year or so. Some the past couple years. Some people who I've known in person, as well as online. You know, for years I've known them. And they continue to get worse. They see communism in more and more things. Look out! And as I said, they'll, they'll list off dozens of conspiracy websites as if that's proof of it. As well as video channels. You know, different sources that have been proven in the past to be wrong with other conspiracy theories. Oh, but, but I'm supposed to pay attention to this, these ones because, oh, because you believe it, so I should believe it. You know, because if I don't consider that, oh, I'm closed-minded. Well, I'm clothes-minded. I like a lot of different types of clothes. Ooh.